Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today, a walk around Truro. <laughs> In today's walk, it's literally a walk around Truro. So we're going to start by, by the bus station, literally go along the riverside, pick up Newham railway line, which is a disused railway line, takes us all the way around the back of County Hall. We're going to follow some residential streets to Kenwyn Church and then come back to here, the centre of Truro. Our walk today comes from ten walks around Truro. It's walk number one. It's got the option of doing a short or a long walk. Today we're going to do the long walk, five and a half miles. Truro is the one and only city in Cornwall. There is a bus, Sarah. A lovely green bus. There is a bus station behind you. Why are we at a bus station? There's not a single sign on it that actually says bus station, but we start here today. We're doing a five and a half mile walk. Our first instruction says head from the bus station towards Marks and Spencers and go onto the subway. So let's go. Sarah, have you got a pound? Oh, I want to go on a train. Train called Dave. Train called Dave. <laughs> as far as I understand, Truro gets its name from three rivers kind of conjoining at this point. One is the Allen, one is the Kenwyn, and the other is um, a lesser known one. I think it's the Glass Diner, is that right? Oh, very good. I always know it as the Kenwyn, the Allen, and the other one. Yeah. I know, we always say that, don't we? And I think this one here is the Kenwyn, the one over on the other side of the shore is the Allen. They're going to meet in a minute to start going down towards Falmouth. Big ships used to come up here right up until the turn of the 20th century. And there used to be quays up there, hence it's called Lemon Quay in front of the Hall for Cornwall. With the popularity of the motor car, they suddenly felt they needed somewhere to park all these vehicles. So back in the 1930s, they literally covered the river over and reclaimed that area. And it's now Lemon Plaza. That little fairground ride at the bottom of Lemon Quay was actually burnt down. I think it might have been arsonist, I can't quite remember. Anyway, there was a big fundraising campaign locally and it was rebuilt using that money, which I think is a lovely story. I wonder if that's why, because each of the little um, vehicles on that was had a little name on it. It did, So it was Dave the Train. Yeah, Brian, Brian the, the Bus. <laughs> Brian the Bus. I wonder if they donated then. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, should have gone on it. <laughs> I know you're itching to get on there, <laughs> weren't you? that's where they meet. The two rivers become one. We have modern buildings here, apartments and offices, and they do give a nod to the wharfs that were once here. All smart and modern now, slick and new. Unfortunately it's low tide so we have got a lot of silt. Interestingly, you can still just make out the old wharf wall with the vertical and horizontal stones, and I believe that's called a Dutch key. It's really exciting because we've noticed they've kept one of the old buildings and converted it. Let me show you. It's this tallest building on the end, brick and tile by the looks of things. Isn't it magnificent? And at the very top, it still has the well builder and manufacturer's logo 1911 HTP and Co. Limited. I wonder if we can find out who that is. There's a canopy where the hoist would have been, the pulley to bring everything up into the warehouse. I'm really excited that one building still survives. It's fabulous about brickwork, isn't it? it? Does. I, I reckon rather than the builder's name, I think that might have been the name of the actual company, uh, company that yeah. worked from there. We'll have to go home and have a look, because I don't know off the top of my head. But no. if we can, we'll, we'll insert some information here. Or make it up. We're good at making <laughs> stuff up. <laughs> Cut. No, we're not, are we? No. 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 Ah, oh, it's got my imagination fired up now. What do you think that could be? Harris, Thomas and Pasco? Hot tasty pasties. <laughs> that reminds me, didn't Fluitt's Bakery used to be up by Radio Cornwall? It did. Yeah, when we were kids, <laughs> yeah. And if you do want a good hot tasty pasty in the Truro area, we've just popped a little video on Patreon. 
about a local bakery. Andrew, well, you'll have to see what he might, thought. I do a, a smile. This is Riverside Walk and it goes around the riverside of a very well-known supermarket. And don't forget to join us this time next week for more walks around supermarkets. <laughs> That's where I had my first job. We're following the Riverside Walk to the end. We're going in front of some nice new buildings. They wouldn't have been here back in the 1900s, would they, Andrew? No, it was actually a sign of it. I will film it in a minute. It says uh, Newham and the Port of Truro. So yeah. we're now entering that area. In the 18th century, smelting works for tin were established at Newham and would prove to be a golden age for commerce and industry in Truro. It's hard to imagine now, but in the early 20th century, the bulk of Truro's domestic coal and gas was brought in by sea and offloaded at Newham. But silting of the river became a problem and larger boats could not make it as far as Newham anymore, preferring the deep water coastal ports like Falmouth. Some evidence of the history that has been lost from sight here. Look at that, the great big granite slabs that would have been the top of the quay. I'm excited now, evidence of wharf side. That'd be for tying up the boats, would it? Yeah. Pretty find it was put in 20 years ago. Probably. Out. From 1840, passenger boats started operating between Truro and Falmouth, and in 1855, the first railway station opened in Newham. This gave a further boost to trade. And for the next 100 years, the Newham line carried cargo the three miles to the main railway line until Newham station was finally closed in 1965, following the Beecham report. I thought you had something to say. I'm filming you. I'm filming you. What do you think that wall was for down there? Well, I just saw that. So I'm wondering now whether that wall was something to do with the railway. Sidings or a station or something. You've got that old maps thing at home, haven't you? Yeah. You're going to dig that out? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Using a fabulous website called Detailed Old Victorian Ordnance, we can wind back the clock. We can see the modern day gas hill where we are, and it was indeed part of the line with the good sheds and track continuing to Garras Wharf and the riverside. So we're now going to be walking on the old track of the railway? Yeah, yeah I great. think it's intriguing. I've never done this walk. I've no. always dashed up Morley Avenue and thought, wondered there must be something down here. Yeah, and this takes you all the way around the back area of Truro, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm really excited to do this. It's lovely, come on then. All those years ago, they would have blasted all that rock out, wouldn't they? To push their railway through. Who would guess yeah. that we are about yeah. a mile that. from all that centre? Less than, less than yeah. a mile, yeah. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Love the contrast. You've confused our dog. Talking of tracks, do you fancy going off the beaten track or off the Newham track? <laughs> yeah. I reckon there's some steps here. I'm pretty sure if we went down there, we'd get a really good view of the creek. I'm up for that. Let's go. On, He's gone. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get a, a view, Andrew. No, there's obviously a path here. People have used yeah. this. But look, the creek is literally here on, on my left. I, I'll sneak my camera view, view and I'll sneak my camera through and get a view. There's more of an opening. So you can see the creek. To our right. There is more of a, a steep hill and we reckon that's probably Morley Avenue, don't we? <laughs> Where the cars go up that hill, you have to put your foot down going up that hill. And um, we're now really pleased because it means that we're following quite a level track. It's lovely, this isn't is, it? This is really nice actually. Yeah. Do you know, there's something special about walking along an old railway track. Yeah. It's really fine. And, you know, I mean, this, I think this must have disappeared to do with the beaching cuts back in the 1960s. Yes, indeed. Um, but 
Isn't it good that they've actually managed to keep some of these tracks as cycleways and walkways? And we've got that still in our culture today, haven't we? That we've got an amenity from the past that we can still use. And that's the key, isn't it? If you've got a, a new use or a purpose for an old thing, be it a building, a railway line, it'll keep keep it alive. I think with railway lines, so they, they connected communities, didn't they? They connected, yeah. you know, you obviously were transporting people or goods. So was, there was always somewhere to go to and somewhere to come from. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of what you do when you're out on a walk, isn't it? You're trying to connect, you're trying to walk from one Two place to another. And this is a really nice way of doing it. Agreed. Is that a bit deep? <laughs> it's for you, yeah. Where's the joke? No, I'm too late. I'm turning it off. I'm, My arm's aching. I'm flat out of jokes. Ah. You've been derailed. I've been derailed. <laughs> um, I'm failing to connect. <laughs> I, I've hit the buffers. <laughs> right, I'm steaming along now. <laughs> You're ste rolling. Full steam ahead. Oh, I'm going to trip over the dock. <laughs> When we decided to do this walk, I said to Andrew, we're going to cross two railway bridges that I've always passed underneath. And in the background, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, the sound of traffic, which is the main Truro Falmouth road. Really busy road. Really busy road. And we've got no worries because we're just going to go over the top. Yay! I will wave <laughs> at them from the top of the bridge. I bet they won't even see us. <laughs> wow, they're all going so slow. Let's get on the bridge and see why. Traffic jam. Another old Butler Dutch bridge over a road. So that takes you up to towards Sainsbury, an old county hall. If you turn left, you'll head towards the roundabout at the top of Station Hill. Is there a car? There's a car. There is. I will film the car. Obligingly, I'll the film the other side. The people in the car will go, why, why is there a madman on the bridge filming me? After the second bridge, drop down to a wide track on your right, turn left uphill along the track beside the boundary of New County Hall. And in the background, I swear blind, I can hear the train running along the Truro Farmers Branch line. There's the train! I used to work here at one point in my lifetime. I do distinctly remember these stairwells. They're kind of clad in wood. And the smell in them is quite unique when the sun warms the whole vestibule area. It warms up the wood and you just smell the wood. It was a lovely smell. Curious, I always think that's curious how smells are reminiscent of a previous moment in your life. Very strong memory retreating overhanging bit is the members suite where the committees make all those important decisions about how to spend taxpayers money. So it's built in the 60s as I remember and when we were working in it there was all sorts of maintenance issues around the concrete cancer with the metal rods inside rusting blowing off the concrete and stuff like that. I don't know if it's true or not it looks pretty much as I remember it here you can see little patches of newer cement. So maybe it is true. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Let's carry on with that walk anyway. Enough of reminiscing. Two things to point out about County Hall, Sarah. What's that? They've got a fig tree there. Oh, have they? Yeah. You didn't miss that. I did. I also remember when I was really small, probably about age four, maybe five, going to St Agnes Model Village and they had a replica of County Hall and they were really proud of it. I think yeah. they also had the helipad at, yeah. at Penzance as well. No, this is not your fig tree, Andrew. This is, um, oh, it's right on the tip of my tongue. It's something Japonica. No, it's gone, but it's not a fig tree. No, I'm sorry to burst your bubble. One thing I know about County Hall, Sarah. <laughs> and we'll is, leave is it there. When I was that high, yeah. Oh, 
busy, isn't it? I think on a weekday it'd be easier because all the cars stop it, and you just you just go in front of a stopped car. It's going like a car park, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we're going into a residential area now, taking Dobbs Lane that turns into Bosvigo Lane. Never been to Kenwyn Church. We haven't, have we? No. Um, so I know it's got an unusual lich gate. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I can actually see. It's right at the end there. I can only see a house. That's not a house. That's a lich gate. Oh! Yeah. So there's a room above the gate. It's unusual, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to tell you something now, so you're going to be dead impressed. Right. So this is the Lich Gate, which we've spoken about. Uh, yes. Right. Now, did you know that Lich is an Anglo-Saxon word and it means corpse? Ooh. Yeah. It's basically, it's this corpse gate. Ooh. Yeah. I said you'd be dead impressed. <laughs> Nothing more to add. It's my body of work. <laughs> I'm going to go for a rest. We love this King's England book and it says of Kenwyn Church Splendid beaches bring us to the porch where stands a most elegant cross to a father, son and grandson. The father 22 years vicar, the son 22 years bishop and grandson 43 years a Madagascar missionary. The vicar was George James Cornish who died in the middle of the 19th century by the cross as a holy well with a pool of clear water at the foot of a flight of steps. A pretty scene it is for the old stone face looking out of the church yard wall. Oh, he found it. Oh, the sun's on him as well. I like that. Do you know anything about the face? I don't, but I do like the way the lichen makes it look like he's got hair. It does. They're preparing at the moment for evening service and the church warden came out and had a lovely chat with us. He explained one of these, he wasn't quite sure which generation, but one of these men was a, a male midwife. Ah. So does that make him a mid-husband? It would be a mid-husband, wouldn't it? <laughs> Mid-husbandry. Mid yeah. <laughs> what lovely thought though, because that's like... 1800 and something. Wow, that must be really unusual. I wonder how many babies he delivered. <laughs> Okay, so our instructions say, note Emily Early's cross where the path bears right and goes downhill. How many crosses have we looked at so far? Loads. <laughs> We're in a graveyard. <laughs> and they told us to look for one cross with this Emily is, Early on. This is a big, big graveyard as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this has tickled me. Mm. I can see three crosses there. <laughs> so we started to go downhill but we haven't changed direction yet so perhaps when we start leading off to the right that'll be really obvious so it's another two here Andrew yeah. and a Cornish cross <laughs> do they say Emily early no <laughs> I can see one two three four five six seven eight crosses what's that one it is, it is, is it, it is, it is. Look at that. You found it. Emily Dora Earthy. Oh, Earthy. Okay. No, it says early. Here. <laughs> found it. It's been immortalised. Yeah. <laughs> In a guidebook. I know. And it got a name wrong. Yeah, oh, bless. <laughs> I'd be livid. Okay, so what does it actually tell us to do? <laughs> It says note Emily Early's cross. There it is. She, she, Emily Earthly. Earthy. She, no wonder she's cross. <laughs> I got her name wrong. <laughs> Where the path bears left and go downhill. Right or left? Uh, right. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering why that one in particular. It amuses me. There's so many in the churchyard. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of fun, isn't it? I like this. The next instruction. Oh, you're not focusing. Come on, focus. There we go. It says by Edgar Lean. 
all gravestones lean. They all lean, don't they? <laughs> Whoever wrote this has got a sense of humour. <laughs> Edgar Thomas. Edgar Thomas. Who are we looking for? Edgar Lean. No? <laughs> it could be any of these, couldn't it? And let's be honest. <laughs> I found it. Found it? No. Oh. <laughs> In loving memory of Edgar Lee. Yes. There we are. Passed away, 1955. We're going down here now. Onward. <laughs> Construction's worked. Yeah. So steep. Come on, boy. Do you know what, sir? I really like these city centre walks. <laughs> Yay! This must be one of the oldest sort of spots in Truro. Never changed, has it? No. Look at that flight of steps up behind you. Wow, it's so steep. Have we decided which of the rivers this one might be then? <laughs> well, we've just left Kenwyn Church. We're in Kenwyn. So I think it's the Allen. Not the Kenwyn River? <laughs> yeah. So, did I hear recently they're going to be redeveloping this whole area? Yeah, so when, when Cornwall had six district councils, there was one here called Carrick Council, Carrick District Council, and the offices are now pretty much redundant. I think they've made a concerted effort to vacate a lot of those offices, and it stretches all the way around to the law courts, and they're going to demolish the whole lot. Big plans, isn't there? This is Union Place. Some beautiful old Georgian houses here. Lovely palette, pastel colours. And then look at this vibrant yellow one. I love it. Colour. Absolutely wonderful. We see too much grey these days. I'm so glad that the walk has taken us this way. I love the aspect of the cathedral, particularly this evening with the sun on the spire. Glowing, isn't it? Beautiful. So this says there's been a church on this site since the 13th century and in 1768 the building was remodelled in the Georgian style and a 39 metre high spire was added of which this is the top section and it was removed in 1880 when the church was demolished to make way for the building of the cathedral. Uh, relocated to the Bishop's Palace at Kenwyn it formed part of a sundial until it was brought back to its present permanent location in Cathedral Green in 2015. Question? Yeah. If you put the sundial on top of that, how on earth are you ever going to read it? That's a really good question. <laughs> Carefully. <laughs> With a step ladder. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just had a thought, perhaps that was casting the shadow and then there were stones on the ground to tell you what time it was. Ah, you're probably right, aren't you? Yeah. Clever. That is assuming we get sun. Yeah. <laughs> Misty day, don't work. Don't, don't work, is it, no? <laughs> the cathedral wraps around and kind of absorbs St Mary's Church, which was originally the parish church of Truro. Some little book picked up. It's called About the City by David Mudd. Now, do you remember when we were kids back in the 1970s and 80s? David Mudd was a local MP. Yes, I do. But he was also an author. He wrote quite a few books actually. He was passionate about Cornwall. And this one's all about Truro. And he's talking about the building of the cathedral here. Now, the cathedral, this was in 1880 that they started to build this. And he says that um, money would indeed be in a short supply. So nothing's changed there. And they estimated that the price to set aside for building the cathedral was £95,000, but that excluded the three spires and the interior fittings. And as local materials would be were deemed to be the cheapest, they set out to find where in the county they could get the stone for building the cathedral. 
So they went and they scoured the quarries of Truro, Chasewater, St Cullum, Lost Withiel and Red Roof before deciding on Mabe granite for the exterior oh, okay. and stone from St Stephen's for the inside. By the early months of 1880, the area from which the cathedral would grow was being cleared and down came houses and an inn, streets were blocked off, machinery and scaffolding began to accumulate and on the 20th of May 1880 the foundation stones were laid by the Prince of Wales. Oh wow! Should we try and find the foundation stone? Let's try and have a look for that. Come on. So I would have thought logically the foundation stone would be very close to the entrance. Well, They're yeah. saying that, they demolished part of the old St Mary's Church didn't they? True. So perhaps it's closer to that area. Perhaps. St Mary's Church is at the bottom here, the site of the original parish church for Truro, before they added all this. Look at it, isn't it wonderful? Wow, buttresses, roofs, turrets, everything. The colour of the stone is really rich as well, it makes it very warm, quite a welcoming building, which is what you want for a church, isn't it? Okay, so... St Mary's Church is that bit there and goes up. There's the old spire of St Mary's Church. So you'd think that this would be the first bit they built. <laughs> I can't see it, can you? I can't see it. Okay, let's go round the back of St Mary's Church and see if it's on the other side where it joins. You can see, again, the seam of the old and the new. So the old is now on the left and the new on the right. But there's nothing here. Gosh. I bet it's one of those things that if you know where it is, you're currently screaming at the screen. Go left, go left. It's round the corner. Nothing obvious. There's some writing over there. It's behind this sign. I could see some writing. The cornerstone of this cathedral church of St Mary in Truro was placed by HRH Albert Edward Prince of Wales and Duke of Cornwall. Hey. We found it Thursday the 20th day of May 1880. Hey, we found it! High hey. five! Brilliant! <laughs> and they tried to cover it up. I know! <laughs> Andrew, one last thought. Yeah. If that was a church, yeah. St Mary's Church there. It was. What do they do with the graveyard? <laughs> no bongs. No bongs. Oh, really? My battery's gonna die. I don't think I'm gonna get it. Two. Them. Three. Six. Four. Five. Tea time. Our walk today comes from ten walks around Truro. It's walk number one. It's got the option of doing a short or a long walk. Today we're going to do the long walk, five and a half miles. Quite a complicated map this one. So we start here at the bus station and pick up the old railway line. It takes us all the way around the back of County Hall. Then we wander through the residential area up to Kenwyn Church. That magnificent flight of stairs we took down to cross the river again. We've come back to the cathedral and we'll meander through the city back to the bus station. At the end of our walk, five and a half miles around Truro. Yeah, we've never done this walk before. I've enjoyed it. Yes, but it had much more peaceful countryside than I expected. I thought we'd have more hustle and bustle. But that isn't to say it wasn't a good walk. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, and there's not many walks you can do from a city which are so quiet. And it was a pleasant <laughs> walk as well because you're following that railway line for the first half of it. So it was really good. And looking for gravestones to direct you according to your path. We've never had that before. No, not in an instruction book, but we found it and it worked. Yeah. So what so would you what would you score it, Sarah? Well, 
if we were going by our school chart, we'd have to knock it down because it's the style of the book doesn't give you any history, so that would lose the point. So it's going to be a nine out of nine for me. Okay, well I agree with that as well. Yeah, because uh, you know map works and yeah. the instructions work, and we've had a lovely day out exploring yeah. around Truro. Brilliant. Help us grow our channel. Please subscribe and consider supporting us on Patreon.